I've got this 20 gallon planted aquarium with a school of cardinal tetras, a school of corridoras, and I'm thinking while it's very peaceful looking, it just needs a little pizzazz, you know, like a centerpiece fish. Something that's a little bigger, maybe a little more colorful than the rest of the fish without being like too big so that it'll eat its tank mates. So I figured I'd grab Zenzo over and we'd brainstorm some of our favorite centerpiece fish for each of the most popular tank sizes. All right, I'm gonna start off with the five gallon tank, which is pretty small. So we're probably not, not gonna be able to fit a centerpiece fish and a schooling fish. So I'm just gonna go with the standard classic betta fish. You've got a ton of varieties, beautiful colors, long flowy fins or shorter fins if you want them. I really like them because, you know, they are kind of territorial and semi-aggressive to begin with. Like you can put them in a community tank, but you'd have to be a lot bigger than five gallons. So if you're gonna just keep one single fish, a five gallon tank would be a nice minimum. Now some things I would keep in mind while you're setting up this five gallon tank would be they definitely like slower flow. They're not the fastest fish out there. So a sponge filter would be a good filtration system to use because you probably aren't going to have room to put a cleanup crew in there because I mean in the past I've tried shrimp and snails and depending on how chill your betta fish is, it may or may not work, but just in case you can't, live aquarium plants are a really good option because it'll help consume that nitrogen waste that your betta fish is creating and then help purify the water. And also finally, a lot of people, you know, because of how interactive your betta is, they're gonna want to overfeed it because, you know, you just can't resist those cute puppy eyes, right? Be careful, you don't wanna have a very, very obese betta fish. It could affect its health. So make sure to feed enough so it has like a slightly rounded belly and that would be a good amount to kind of portion size. If you want more details, make sure to check out our full care guide in our betta care video. Zenzo, why don't you tell us about the next size up, 10 gallons. Thanks, Irene, I love the idea for the five gallon. So my idea for a centerpiece fish for a 10 gallon aquarium is going to be the epistogramma. Epistogramma, sometimes referred to as apistos for short, are brightly colored, inquisitive, wonderful fish. They grow to be about three to three and a half inches in length, and they originate from South America. This South American cichlid does well in a neutral pH, and they don't really require low pH. The water temperature should be between 72 all the way up to 86 degrees, and they do well in planted aquariums. Now, epistogramma like to kind of claim the lower part of the aquarium, so planting your plants in little bunches and having some open areas will benefit them. And as far as tank mates, I'm gonna recommend having some mid to upper level tank mates like small tetras and pencil fish. If you do wanna have some algae cleaners in there, I would recommend autosynclus as a good pairing with your episto. Yeah, I've actually kept Epistogramma agazizii, a breeding pair in a 10 gallon. So if you're looking for like a breeding project, that would also be something fun to do. As for 20 gallons, I showed you guys my tank in the beginning of the video, but you know, now we're opening up to a little more room where we can have like a schooling fish in the mid water, a schooling fish kind of at the bottom, and then your awesome centerpiece fish. And actually in this aquarium in the past, I had a powder blue dwarf gourami named Unicrom, and he was awesome. Like we're talking about this three inch blimp that's going around in the tank. They had these really cool specialized ventral fins that look like little whiskers on the bottom. Bottom, big ol' eyes, very interactive fish. My only complaint would be he's a little bit of a food hog, so definitely make sure to feed kind of little pockets of food all around the aquarium just to make sure everybody gets a bite to eat. And then also, you may not have known this, but dwarf gouramis are not necessarily the best community fish. They're kind of semi-aggressive like the betta fish as well. So uh, in that case, I would recommend maybe getting a female powder blue dwarf gourami because uh, in general, the female dwarf gouramis are harder to find because they're kind of duller in color. But for some reason, the powder blue dwarf gourami, the female version is still really vivid in coloration. So very, very fun fish. Definitely recommend that you get one. Yeah, gouramis are a lot of fun. Every time I see some beautiful gouramis in a store, I always think, ah, oh, I haven't kept those in a long time. Maybe I should have a gourami again. In fact, I was thinking about this yesterday and the last time I had a gourami was I think like in 2002. So it's been a long time since I've had that fish, but very fun. You need fun. to get one, they're awesome. Yeah, they are awesome, they're a lot of fun. So uh, maybe maybe one day I'll get one again. So my recommendation for the next tank size is gonna be the 29 to 30 gallon aquarium. So. When you get to a 29 gallon aquarium, you have a little bit more space than you do in the 20. Obviously it's nine gallons more, but you have more length and more height. So now we can start to do some a little bit larger fish. So my recommendation for a centerpiece fish is gonna be an angelfish. 
Now, typically I wouldn't recommend angelfish for many fish keepers in a 29 gallon aquarium, especially if you're gonna have a few of them, as they can be a little bit territorial and pick on one another. You can be successful with having like a couple of pairs in a 29, but usually you have to really keep on top of it to manage the aggression. So for me, I'm gonna recommend the angelfish as a solo fish in a 29 as your centerpiece fish. Now angelfish can get quite large. They grow to be around six inches in length or so. Um, they do prefer warmer temperatures, so 78 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, pH range, they're very hardy and can take a pH of six up to about eight. And uh, they come in a variety of color patterns. So there's a lot of different angelfish that you can choose from. Now, the great thing about having an angelfish in a 29 as your solo centerpiece fish is that they're a little bit more docile and calm when they're kept alone. So some of those aggression things that I talked about earlier, when you have them paired up or multiple angels in one tank, you're not gonna see that with just one alone with some other types of fish in there. When it comes to tank mates, I would recommend maybe some larger tetra species like cardinal tetras or rummy nose or even like a black skirt tetra. And if you're looking for some bottom dwellers, they do well with Corydoras. So Irene, what do you think about my 29 gallon slash 30 gallon idea for an angelfish? I actually have never kept angelfish before and I would love to, but again, I haven't gotten, I actually mostly keep nano tanks that are 20 gallons and below. And so definitely angelfish is on my bucket list. But if I were going to pick a next kind of bigger size to get, I think a 40 gallon breeder is what I'm gonna shoot for. And for that, my centerpiece fish would be a fancy goldfish. And yeah, I know it sounds like a very common fish, but for me, I've never kept it before. And I think most people don't realize like how big they can get, like anywhere from six to 10 inches in length, like a real big chonker, right? And uh, they're pretty fun. You know, not only do they come also in a lot of varieties, a lot of colors, you also can keep them in an unheated aquarium. So as long as it's indoor kind of room temperatures, it's gonna do pretty well for you. They definitely want a higher kind of vegetable content in their diet just because they don't have the best digestive system. So a lot of people like to feed them not only high quality goldfish pellets, but also rapashi gel food is good, uh, blanched vegetables, or even plant trimmings or duckweed from some of your other tanks. If you do want to keep them with live aquarium plants, probably aim for something that's bigger and the leaves are a lot tougher. So maybe some of the larger Anubius plants like Anubius barteri, uh, crinum, calamistratum. I've seen Cory keep them with them. As well as I've seen some people mention Marimo moss balls. The goldfish will try to kind of nibble at them, but, but because they're round, they'll end up just kind of spinning around and kind of, it looks like they're kicking a soccer ball. So I would love to do that in one of my goldfish tanks. As for tank mates, you wanna aim for something that can live in those cooler waters like the goldfish can, as well as not be uh, so small that your goldfish ends up gobbling them because let's admit it, they are called water piggies for a reason. I love your idea for a goldfish, a fancy goldfish in a 40 gallon. In fact, I have a 40 gallon tank in this fish room that's lower, that stays a little bit cooler in this room. And that's actually my plan on having a fancy goldfish in there. Yes. And also because I have a duckweed problem in that tank and I've got a duckweed <laughs> problem in a couple of tanks, <laughs> lots of duckweed, it's a constant food source. So great advice. I think that's a great choice. Awesome. So next up, I'm gonna talk about the next tank size above the 40 breeder or common tank size. And that's gonna be a 55 gallon or a 75 gallon. Now, the reason I'm putting both of them in there is they have similar dimensions. They're both 48 inches wide. The difference is that the 55 gallon aquarium, it's gonna be a little bit narrower front to back than the 75. So the 55 is gonna be about 13 inches front to back and the 75 is gonna be about 18 inches front to back. But uh, the fish that I'm gonna recommend will do well in either of these. So I couldn't choose just one fish for this tank size, but since we have two tanks, we'll do two fish. So the first recommendation is gonna be the Amazon puffer. Now, most puffers in the aquarium hobby that don't get very large usually require brackish water, but this is one of the true freshwater species that's, that does get large enough to be in some of these larger aquariums. Now, the Amazon puffer only grows to be around, about three inches in length, but they are very personable, and that is one of the reasons why I chose them as kind of your centerpiece wet pet for that larger aquarium. Now, they are one of the more peaceful puffers, so they do well with other fish. So as long as you pair them with the right tank mates, you shouldn't have any issues, 
but like other puffers, they are going to require a little bit more uh, focus when it comes to feeding them. So they do have teeth that are kind of like a beak and they need to be continually filed down. Um, and they do this by eating crunchier or harder foods. You are gonna wanna make sure that you're giving them foods like uh, snails, um, freeze-dried shrimp, um, things that are a little bit harder that allowing them to file down their teeth. Uh, I've, I've also had you know, success using different frozen foods. Um, and even they, you know, some Amazon puffers will take to some prepared foods, uh, like a Viber Bites as an example. But mostly you're probably gonna wanna focus on freeze-dried, frozen, and live foods. Now regarding their teeth, it is important to give them those harder foods because what will happen is if they don't have hard foods to eat, their teeth or their beaks will continue to grow and eventually they're gonna have a problem and not be able to consume food. So I actually have two Amazon puffers in a 60 gallon aquarium mm. and one of them is very picky as far as eating while the other one destroys snails and everything. So <laughs> they were always in the same tank together. They always had the same food sources, but one was more picky than the other when it came to its teeth. So right now there's a mm. situation where its teeth are getting too long. So I'm gonna have to anesthetize very carefully the fish and uh, do a little bit of surgery with some nail clippers and then put it back in the aquarium and just monitor it. So if you do wanna learn more about that, we do have an article on our website that talks you through how to uh, perform this dental surgery essentially on your puffer. Now puffers are very curious. They have a great personality. They're kind of that fish that will look at you with their big, beautiful, bubbly eyes and swim up to the surface. You can train them to eat out of your hand. So they are a very fun fish. And the Amazon puffer is a beautiful fish as well. Kind of a yellow gold in color with some dark bands and a white underbelly. So a fun fish. Now my other fish that I would recommend for this tank size is also a colorful fish that's also very beautiful and that's the electric blue Akara. They do get quite large though so you can see them six inches or larger uh, when they're full grown. They do prefer tropical temperatures so anywhere from 74 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, pH anywhere from about 6 to 7.5 and they are relatively peaceful. Some tank mates that you could keep with them would be like some Corydora, you could keep them with bristlenose plecos and also some large larger schooling textures that are large enough to not get eaten by a six inch cichlid. Electric blue acara are very easy to feed. They're omnivores and will pretty much take to any fish food that's available. Okay, Zenzo, since I know nothing about monster tanks, basically, I'm just gonna let you land this plane with our largest tank. All right, let's land this plane. So the largest tank that we're gonna talk about in this video is the 125. The 125, very common tank, and it's kind of the entry level to monster tanks, right? It's a six foot wide tank, so you can keep a lot of larger fish in there, or you can keep lots of small fish. So the centerpiece fish that I'm going to recommend for the 125 is gonna be the Oscar cichlid. Now the Oscar cichlid is a very personable fish. Sometimes they're called like a water puppy or a water dog. They are a true wet pet. I've kept them in the past and they're a lot of fun. You can actually observe their behavior. Sometimes they'll get moody and like sulk at the bottom of the aquarium if they're unhappy about something. You can train them to eat out of your hand. They'll come and greet you at the front of the glass. So they are a very fun fish to keep. The Oscar cichlid does get quite large. So you might see them in the pet store and they're around two to three inches and they look super cute. But just know that that cute little two to three inch fish is gonna be 10 to 12 inches in length, if not more sometimes within the first year. The other thing with Oscars is they can be a little bit messy. So just make sure that you have good filtration, you keep up on your, your maintenance, or you have a very good cleanup crew in your fish tank. Now, Oscars come in a few different color variations. Some common types would be the Tiger Oscar with its bold kind of red-orange markings against a black or darker background. Some other varieties would be albino. So they come in lots of different color variations, but they all have that same similar body shape. And even though they look like a large monster fish, they're actually not super aggressive. They can show a little bit of aggression to one another, especially if they're any kind of spawning behavior, if they've paired off and they might be chasing away another fish, but they tend to not be very aggressive. So keep that in mind when you're choosing tank mates. Usually you'd wanna get something that's not gonna pick on them, something that's gonna be uh, maybe a little bit smaller. So if you wanted to pair them with other cichlids, maybe like firemouth cichlids or convict cichlids, even the electric blue Akara that I mentioned earlier, that would be a great uh, tank mate for Oscars. Um, also, they would do great with uh, larger Congo tetras if they're full grown. Um, I've kept them with silver dollar tetras, various catfish, 
plecos. Um, there's a lot of different fish that do well with Oscars. And then lastly, like most of these fish, they do prefer to have tropical temperatures anywhere from about 74 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit and can also handle a wide pH range from six all the way up to eight. Zenzo, you are seriously making me want to just skip the 40 gallon breeder and go straight to huge tank. <laughs> but I think my husband would kill me. If you guys are interested in what our founder Corey thinks are his favorite centerpiece fish, check out this oldie but goldie over here. Enjoy Nature Daily and we'll see you guys next time.